Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to talk about what is going to be massive for this week in the stock market and in particular the day that's going to be massive is Wednesday and we'll talk about that in a second. Until Wednesday the market might be a little bit nervy and uh, you might see it in the markets. There's a little bit of nervousness waiting for this big day and uh, when we do get to the markets on Wednesday that's probably where we're going to see some some big moves. Uh, before we get on to why that is and what's going to be really important for this week, if you haven't already seen, I did bring out some limited edition posters. There's only 50 of them. They're selling really fast and I am recording this a little bit a few hours ahead of when I actually release it so they could be all gone but uh, if they aren't all gone I expect them to be all gone in a few hours time they are going really quick and like I said I'm only limiting them down to 50 and then I'm never doing this again and uh, it's a little bit of a celebration to uh, well also a reminder that uh, you know people will talk negative and trash and short sellers will attack your stocks in bear markets and sometimes they can be massive buying opportunities and they're sold to incredibly low valuations. So if you were a him shareholder and you were buying in that 2022 stock market crash, you probably got the reward. So uh, go treat yourself uh, and get this post and you can always remember that when we are in a bear market, there's always them opportunities to buy stocks at amazing value. So yeah, uh, that's if they're still around. Uh, if they are, I'll make sure I drop a link in the description or also in the comment box. But we'll get stuck on to what's going to be happening this week. So this week, the Fed. The Fed are going to be coming out and bringing out what potentially they're going to be increasing the interest rates by. So this will be on the 21st and then on the 22nd. So we'll probably talk about this on the 22nd. Now, at the moment, the expectations is the Fed are now going to go by a 0.25 hike or a 25 basis points hike. And I would expect them to do that. I don't think they'll go 50. I don't think they'll go 10 basis points. But hey, if it goes 50 you know the market will be spooked on that. If they go 10 basis points, everyone will be really optimistic about that. So that's the key thing to be looking out for. Now, I think that they will obviously increase by 0.25. Then the next thing that everyone will be looking at is in about half an hour after that's launched, I think it's an hour, uh, Jerome Powell will go do a press conference and also he'll release a statement and then there'll be the Q&A session. So originally you'll see like a little bit of move off what the interest rate hike is. Uh, depending on how much that is. The second move you'll see is uh, when he releases the statement and if there's any change of words in that statement previously that suggests what the Fed are potentially going to do in the future. And then in the Q&A session, you'll probably be able to get a better sense of the words that he's using and there'll be more direct questions about the future of interest rate hikes. Now, obviously, what everyone will be looking for is what is the tone? Is the tone like, we are done now? Um, or is it going to be the still, inflation still very high? We need to keep battling away with it. So that's what everyone's going to be looking at for what Jerome Powell's going to be uh, coming on. As always, I think he'll go for the classic de defense mechanism where it's like we'll take it uh, meeting by meeting. We'll see what inflation's at at the time. Uh, at the moment, it's still high, so we will still need to increase interest rates. Uh, but realistically, I think he'll be looking at thinking, well, the next Fed meeting isn't until May time. So obviously in that time, you'll probably get April's uh, inflation data or the inflation data for March and April. And in that time frame, I think he'll be looking and going, if we're actually in the five range by then, I think he might go, we could pause because they've got to remember that all the things that the Fed are putting in is going to take a couple of months to come actually into the cycle. So I think the Fed potentially, if they are happy with the inflation data in April, I probably would see them pause or maybe so a 10 basis points and then I would see them pause in June. I, I think that'll be it. So that's what everyone will be looking at, but everyone will be trying to see, is that what Jerome Powell is going to say? Obviously, he's not directly going to say that because he doesn't want to say, yeah, we're going to probably pause in June and then it gets to June and then he doesn't pause. He doesn't want to be backed into a corner like that. So he's not going to openly admit it, but everyone's going to see if there's potentially the hints there that he potentially could be doing that. So that's what everyone's going to be looking at anyway, and we'll have a better idea on Wednesday rather than guessing, but those are the few things to be... Uh, to be looking at. And that leads us on to some earnings for this week. So we've got a few earnings just to maybe speak about. Uh, we've got Pin Doo, Doo uh, we've got Foot Locker. Foot Locker is a stock that I'll be keeping an eye on. I should have bought this months ago. Uh, during 2022, uh, the start of 22, this is one of the stocks that got hammered. Uh, and the it went down to a crazy valuation. I think if the market got spooked, because I think Mike Nike said, not Mike, Nike, Nike said they were going to offer them less products, and it was still plenty. Uh, it was just a little bit less than what was uh, they normally do, and everyone was like, whoa, that's it, and the night partnership's over with, and it wasn't really that big of a deal, but the market, as you know, can overreact massively uh, in, the, in the upside and the downside, and they reacted massively on the downside, and I was staring at this stock around this $30 range, I was like, oh, 
maybe I should buy, maybe I should buy. But at the time, if you remember, everything was coming down. I think I just got caught into buying a lot of opportunities at the time. And uh, it's one that I wish I did buy, really. It would have been a really nice value in dividend stock. And since that time frame, the stock is up 46%. So, yeah, it is, it is what it is. You know, you can't get them all right. Um, but, you know, Foot Locker um, is one that I keep an eye on and see if there's any kind of crazy movement out there that is like, okay, they're having a bit of an overreaction again. Time to buy this one. So, I'll be keeping an eye on that one. New... new I don't know how you exactly say it, but I think it's new. Um, is electric scooter company that I think is quite interesting. Uh, I'll have a check out on them, guys. I've been tracking that one for a few years now. Uh, I've never bought it because I've already got a lot of exposure in Chinese stocks. Uh, we've got Douyu that's reporting uh, Tuesday, Canadian Solar. We've got Huya, which we're going to be reporting. We'll talk about that one in a second. I'll leave that one to the end of the video. Uh, we've got Nike that are reporting earnings. Obviously, such a high quality company. Would love to own Nike. The valuation is just ex extremely high on it, so I can't be doing that. Uh, the actual interesting thing i've seen a few people mention adidas before as like an alternative as a, a potential investment into this sort of space but i think i've already got a lot of exposure in the fashion space i was actually going to do a video uh, I've, I've not got around to it yet i was actually going to talk about a few fashion stocks that are potentially uh, interesting to be looking at but i never got around to it maybe i could do that at some point and uh, point a few out so uh Remind me if I forget that to do that because I think a few guys might be interested in that one. Uh, we've got Petco that are going to be reporting earnings, Chewy that are reporting earnings. I think Skills have actually rearranged their earnings for this Thursday, but obviously it's not on this list. Uh, next week's a crazy one. There's actually quite a few earnings next week. Um, I think the likes of uh, S4 Capital are reporting earnings as well next week. And uh, yeah, not too many other ones that are reporting that I'm really interested in for the rest of the week. But who yeah are reporting earnings? I've not talked about who yeah for a while. This company's been in a bit of a tough situation at the moment and um, the share price has been out. Or declining quite a fair bit at the moment and unfortunately Hugh yeah has it's stock that I still own and I think that uh, it's still a good company and it's still at very good valuations I mean the cash is higher than the market cap which is always insane so uh, I think when you always look at that point of view it's uh, it's absolutely crazy now here yeah, actually started to get a bit more fairly valued at the start of the year went up to six dollars which is a, a lot more of a fair, fair valuation for it and since then it's been coming down again which is absolutely crazy so uh, we'll see what happens with earnings i think that at three dollars i could potentially pick up some more shares in this one and automatically when you look at the cash balance you're like well this is absolutely crazy value but obviously here yeah, has had its problems since i did buy into the stock and um, unfortunately it has been hit with so much regulation that it was very hard to predict how much regulation that stock was going to get hit by and basically you know when you look at the company uh, you know it's a live streaming business and you look at the company itself you know they're being hit by obviously the the cv situation and uh, that's been hard on advertising uh, you've then been hit by new games being banned so there's obviously not the excitement of new games you then have the limitations of uh, people that can play you know under 18s that can play games for certain hours so then you had another band there you had then uh, the tips tips were being limited on a lot of these streaming platforms so then you had another issue there and uh, obviously now the the other issue is that you had basically all what it made a lot of its revenue from which was the tipping service that's been limited and users being limited uh, and also the new games that have been limited. The other income stream that they had, which was the advertising, which was growing really good rates. And then you have the whole CV situation. And then also you have the uh, this whole big you know re recession environment that we're in at the moment. So then advertising gets crushed. So it's had basically both of its income streams crushed, which makes it obviously a, 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 a bit of a bad position for it at the moment and unfortunately you know you can always price in that potentially there's going to be one issue that comes up but when you have like five issues that comes up unfortunately that is obviously very hard to predict and it, it is what it is but however when you consider all the issues that it's had there's actually still a solid company under here like when you look at the recent earnings which i think um, the share price went absolutely crazy off these earnings the company is actually still pretty much near break even after all these issues, which is insane management, how they've done that. Revenue was only down 20% year over year, which is insanely good. And uh, the average month of users as well was increasing as well with all the issues that's on the top. So you've got a company here with cash that's higher than the market cap. You have revenue that's only down 20% after all them issues. The EPS is still, and the profitability is still good. Users are still using the platform, which is amazing. So as long as this company can kind of get through the next kind of 12 months with these tough comps because of the impacts of regulation uh, and the environment that we're in on advertising, well, we're looking 12 months time and uh, hopefully advertising comes back and uh, users carry on coming onto the platform because these are a few games that are now going to be allowed to be launched in China. 
we could have a company that looks actually quite attractive valuations. So yeah, I'll, I'll be looking at this one because um, I've never sold because even though it's, it's a company that has been hit with so many issues, which has been frustrating and kind of broke the invest, investment thesis on this one. When you do look, and this is why I never sold this, because when you do look at the valuation now, you're like, well, even though it's had all these impacts on it, it's still managing quite well, especially when you look at the, the valuation. And I think it's a stock that um, I don't think I'll be able to get what I wanted to get out of it now because of all this regulation or what I originally wanted to get. But I think I could still make money from it. Um, so that's why I've never sold out of the investment because the management is still doing a pretty good job with all the impacts that they've had with the regulation. So we'll see what these guys pull out anyway um, and see what they say there. But obviously, um, obviously, there's been a lot of impacts at the moment which were hard to see all them regulations coming in unfortunately and it is it is what it is um but hey you know you can't win them all you can't have a you can't have a hundred percent hit record in the stock market forever uh you know you look at like the uh, likes of um warren buffett and peter lynch you know even even the greats say you know six out of tens of stocks being up is is a fantastic record so yeah uh, but I, i'm still i'm still optimistic so i'll be interested to see what these guys do anyway um in, in the next uh, earnings on tuesday and uh, there's a few other companies that report earnings that aren't on there anyway but uh just thought i'd talk about that one in particular because i know some of you guys still ask questions about that one so um yeah that's what i'm looking forward to this week we'll see what the fed do that's going to be the big market mover on wednesday and i'm sure i'll be uh, making a video about that later on, on wednesday probably around about eight nine p.m i think anyway so i um, hope you enjoy the video guys have a great week and uh, catch you in a bit